Divine Intervention Ministry, founded in 2002 by Executive Director Deborah Germany shortly after the tragic death of her son Raymond Germany to gang violence. The Mission Statement, dedicated to providing currently and formerly incarcerated adults and at-risk youth with coordinated resources that will connect them to supportive services and job training opportunities, focusing on restoring and realizing their maximum potential spiritually, physically, and economically. The Vision Statement To create a one-stop shop for the re-entry of incarcerated individuals that provides a wide variety of support services to empower and restore the individual, their families, and the community that ultimately leads to a diminished recidivism rate. And now, Deborah Germany. I just want to first just give all honor to God, who is the head of my life. In Him I live, I move, I have my being. With Him, I can do all things. Without Him, I am nothing. I just, right now I just have a spirit of gratitude for what God is doing in the lives of His people. God has truly blessed Divine Intervention Ministries to be housed in a brand new facility in Craft and Grace Tabernacle Community Ministry. Pastor Tony Armstead is my pastor and he was so gracious to open up the doors of his church for our entire prison ministry to be housed here. We're extremely excited about what the Lord is doing here at the Tabernacle uh, in our partnership. Uh, with Divine Intervention Ministries, a powerful, powerful uh, ministry that the Lord has been able to connect us with. Uh, we believe that the Lord is going to transform lives and begin to uh, sow deeply into other people's experiences. And uh, we're just so excited um, that the Lord has allowed us to be able to partner together. And I'm just speechless because I said, Pastor, why me? He said, because you've been faithful. God said you've been faithful. So this is the new home for Divine Intervention Ministries. This is our new home. We'll have, um, we have the second level where we'll bring our entire prison ministry reentry aftercare program. We're also in the Renewal Center downtown where we, we teach the Word of God five days a week in two facilities. And I believe in God to bring the men and women from the Renewal right here to the house of God. Because with Divine Intervention Ministries, all roads lead to Christ. So I'm truly grateful for Pastor Armstead and First Lady to just open up the doors for us to have a home. And I'm on a ministerial staff here, and I'm just grateful this is our new home. And I'm believing God to change this whole community of crafting because Pastor has a vision. And we're lining up right behind the vision to do what thus saith the Lord. So I'm just so grateful and honored to be here. I, words can't even describe the gratitude I have in my heart for such an opportunity. But when we're talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, <laughs> I don't know why I'm surprised because he always goes above and beyond what we could ever ask or think. So keep us in prayer because it's going to take a lot to continue down this walk, but I'm just grateful to be here, and I thank God for Pastor Armstead and First Lady. Well, at the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections, we're really just trying to put a focus on, on doing what we say we do, which is creating an environment where people can leave our system better than they came in. And the, the key step in that is, is acknowledging the humanity of the individuals who are in here, no matter what they did, uh, no matter where they came from. Um, the vast majority of people who come through our front door are gonna leave our back door. And, and so we feel like we not just have an opportunity, but have a responsibility. And so folks like uh, Deborah Germany and what she attempts to accomplish really adds a layer of humanity to what we're trying to accomplish. And, and it also uh, tells people the same thing, you know, that we're trying to tell people that, yes, you did what you did, but you don't have to be that person. You don't have to be that crime, that there's an opportunity for you, even if um, the byproduct of what you did means that you're never gonna get out of here. That doesn't mean that you still have to be uh, that crime you committed. 
Um, so we're just certainly appreciative for, for Deborah and, and her ministry and, and for folks like her who take their time and come in here and really try to impact people's lives who frankly need to be impacted. And it's meaningful on so many different levels. The fact that you can engage people in the community, in this community, in Somerset, where many of you probably wouldn't even know how to get to Somerset if we drove you away from here. But people from this community come in and invest their time in your lives to try to make your path better, to try to give you an opportunity to have a real good life. And you can have that opportunity no matter what your next step is. You control that next step, and you have the opportunity to make that next step a step in a positive direction. And when we're all stepping in a positive direction, the world's a better place. And at the end of the day, that's our job, right? At the end of the day, we're not going to be measured or, or graded by how many possessions we have or what job we had or what title we had. We're going to be measured by the impact we had on others. And to hear from somebody like Deborah Germany, I don't know how many of you have interacted with Deborah Germany, and, and I know that people tell you, oh, I'm a busy guy, this and that. Let me tell you, the one person in Pennsylvania, other than Deb Sod, who is my boss, you were absolutely right about that. Um, when Deborah Germany calls, I come. So Deborah Germany said, hey, I need you to come at such and such a date. And I go, okay, I'm here. I'm driving out here today, driving back, driving back out to Pittsburgh tomorrow. Because this is a lady who's just a remarkable lady who, who had a, a circumstance that many of us would not have responded in the manner she responded. And she's here because she cares about you. And that's an amazing thing. Well, I think the, um, the new home for Divine Intervention Ministries is, is beautiful. Um, the congregation is uh, very warm and welcoming, and I think this will be a good fit for us. That we'll be able to really fit in and really help with the outreach as far as the community. Um, our, our, our job is to get out and help people who are incarcerated that want to come back, be integrated back into the community. So I, I think this will be a, a beautiful home for us. Um, I uh, started working with um, Deborah Germany nine years ago and uh, um, I used to go into all the prisons and, and when she told me that she had a program that they wanted a faith-based program to uh, work at Renewal, I'm, I was really excited about that because I love teaching women, I love teaching men and I knew it would be an uh, opportunity for me to help because I know that you have to have a catch for people who are leaving prison. And since uh, Renewal is a transition place, um, I knew that we could probably help them when they got back into the society, that they'll have a start, um, changing the way they think about themselves. And mainly because we're a Christian-based organization, um, how they think about God and, and how we can make an impact not only on them, but also their families and their community. My name is Katherine Miller, and my, I am the Reentry Program Manager for Divine Intervention Ministry and the Administrator of the Impact Program at the Renault Centers. We have two locations, both located in Pittsburgh. As a Reentry Program Manager, I help to provide resources such as jobs, job information, training information, and housing. In addition, I try to, once I match a client to either job, training, or housing, I continue to follow up to make sure that they're making their transition smoothly. The organization itself, we strive to help individuals have a successful transition back into society. I started um, working with the ministry in um, the spring of 2016, and I have to say that my short time here has been very busy and very productive. One of the areas that I have been focusing on is our, um, our volunteer group, an extremely dedicated group of individuals who are dedicated to um, bringing the word to those who are looking for that second chance. Um, we have changed the name, revised or revamped the name from volunteers and instructors to transformation specialists because what they do is transform people's lives by bringing them the word and helping them to um, 
start over and look at that second chance. My experience had with divine intervention, I can't even um, put into words of my gratitude and appreciation of the ladies ministering to me and being very supportive of me even when I have slipped and fell. I am um, a graduate of Divine Intervention. Today, I can say I am a productive member of society and I use them to, I utilize them to speak God's word into my life and continue on for encouragement. Well, one of the things about the um, what impact will have on this community because of it's already shown, it's already been proven that it's been very effective. As, a, as our volunteers go and they teach Bible study and they tell the word of Jesus to the people that's at the Renewal Center, a lot of them haven't even been introduced to God before. So it gives them a chance to let the feelings that they had before that were empty and void be filled with the Spirit of God. And as they come into the community, they get a chance to show that spirit, to help out, to be able to serve. And some of them never had a chance to do that. So this will be giving them the opportunity to give back to the community. And doing that, it makes them better citizens as well as taxpayers. We have the opportunity to have a room where there are computers, where we can um, have people be involved in um, job search and um, just learn computer skills, just simply to be able to gain more confidence in themselves, in their work abilities, and their abilities to fit into the new age of technology. Um, we're also looking forward to using the space to do groups. I think what the Divine Ministry is gonna do is add another dimension to the church and to the community. I believe that what we're gonna try to do, and will do, should I say, Sister Deborah and Grace Tabernacle will try to influence individuals that are out there that are trying to get a start or re reassess themselves in the community or in life. I believe we'll be a tremendous asset to working with Divine Ministries. Well, I think it's a fresh start, a new beginning. And once you've paid your dues to society for things you may have done in your past, to have a ministry come in and not judge you based on what your past was, but to help you have a new beginning and a fresh start. I think that's an asset for the community. My experience with Divine Intervention Ministries has been uh, awesome, to say the least. Life-changing as well. Um, I met Sister Deborah, the founder of Divine Intervention, when I was in the penitentiary. They set aside a day for people to come into the penitentiary called the Day of Responsibility. And at that time, I was trying to take the initiative in my life to be responsible. And when she came in there along with all these other community leaders, it opened up a door for me to be able to get with people that would be able to help me to transition success successfully from prison to, success to society. And um, when she got in there, she started telling her story about her son. It really helped me to just pay attention more to my life being important and helping other young men's lives and letting them know it's important as well. Um, once I got out of prison, I got with Sister Deborah. She came down and ever since I got out of prison, she introduced me into uh, transportation for me to get a job and then for after I got my job for me to get uh, transportation to work, to and from work. and. Um, she actually introduced me to a church too. Uh, when I got out, it was called Jesus Dwelling Place. Uh, and from that point, uh, Jesus Dwelling Place has been a blessing for me since I've been out of prison um, for two and a half years, almost three. Um, I married my wife there. Uh, and going to that place that she introduced me with her family from Divine Intervention, she introduced me to Jesus Dwelling Place. It's been a place where I've been praying for years when I was in prison on what the Word of God meant and I've been learning so much and I've been growing just by the Word of God because that's my desire as a believer in, in Christ 
is to grow by the word of God. And um, I thank God for Divine Intervention and Deborah Germany and all the other people who's in the ministry because they actually inspire me to volunteer more, help out more. And actually I was doing some minister, uh, ministering slash mentoring uh, with UPMC because I got that privilege through Divine Intervention to work with at-risk youth and teenagers in the community where I'm a committed member at Jesus Dwelling Place. And they've been doing so much more in my life. Um, I could say so much, but just in a nutshell, um, they have been a blessing with helping me to transition. And I know that um, there's going to be more to come from them and us working together to try to make a positive impact in the lives of not just younger people, but older people, people of color, people of, that's not of color, rich, poor. Um, we wanna help to traumatize uh, people who are in poverty, people who are just don't know Christ. And uh, they have been not only a people who talk about that they love Jesus, but they show it, um, not just towards me, but towards people that I come in contact that they impacted in our lives every day. So divine intervention has been real to me um, because the God that I serve, Jesus Christ, is real and they try to implement their faith in God to the community. Uh, well, I'll start with, I met um, Deborah Germany at Geneva College. We were both going to Geneva and I've been doing prison ministry for 11 years. And she was uh, telling me about her program that she was doing with um, uh, ex-offenders and offenders that were at the renewal and uh, she was looking for people to teach and I told her that I would be interested in that and after that we kind of got together and um, with uh, teaching and doing mentoring and uh, one thing led to another next thing you know I was uh, uh, the instructor teaching the women that were coming in um, to uh, do life skills, biblical life skills for uh, the women and men at Renewal. I have seen the passion in um, Minister Deborah. Her passion comes out due to um, the calling that God has given her to reach um, men and women. I have seen uh, these precious souls broken and wounded. And even though they are in uh, incarceration or getting ready to get out, um, the significance of Divine uh, Intervention Ministries is to help bridge that gap, um, number one, and number two, to help them turn over their lives in order to um, become better, not just in life, but spiritually, knowing that it is the spiritual aspect that will make a change in a man and a woman's life. It is a sacrifice within this ministry. Um, you have to go through something to be able to see through the eyes of God in which um, Minister Deborah has, and not just her, but also the other workers in Divine uh, Intervention Ministries. Um, they bring to the table something very awesome. Mostly, it is the love of Christ. It is the desire of Christ that we would reach out. So I, the experience that I have has been marvelous, and it has actually left me um, wanting to stick my foot in there, my hand in there, and uh, continue what they're doing. And the thing about Deborah is that she's uh, she's like a powerhouse. You don't you don't know how powerful she is until you hear her speak. You know, I mean, as a husband, I, I I get to see both sides, but people think of her as being kind of you know timid and and more like like more like someone's in the in the back taking care of stuff. But when she gets on that, on that stage and speaks to her her ministry, you know, she she's powerful. She she commands your attention and respect. So my, my point today is please, young men, take full advantage of your second chance. Get every training, every certification, whatever you need to do, do it. You gotta put the time in. Now there's more stuff available to you than ever before. And we have a secretary who is dedicated day and night to making sure you have the tools that you need. So there's really no excuse. There's no excuse. 
And for one of the questions that one of you posed about how do you get connected to the other side, call me. That's what Divine Intervention is designed to do, to help you get connected to the services that you need. As African American women, we have a tendency to handicap our black males by providing everything for them, giving them everything, doing everything for them. So I stand for you today as a mother guilty of that. I thought that I was doing right by my son, but instead I became an enabler. He developed this type of attitude like I was supposed to do it, like I owed him something. So I stand for you today as a mother guilty of that. I thought I was doing right by my son, but in the long run, I wasn't. I also stammer for you today as a mother to tell you I really know my son too well. I'm sure you say, well, how could you not know him? He was your son. Well, you see, I knew him as a little guy. Once he was removed from my home, it changed the dynamics of our relationship. Once he got removed from my home, I couldn't look into his eyes and tell you if something was bothering him. When my son got murdered, I couldn't even tell you what his favorite color was, because again, he was always gone in some institution always gone in some institution. I would like to ask another question. How do you think it would affect your family if your life was suddenly taken? I need everybody in here to just think about that for a moment. I need you to walk with me with this thing. Picture it. If your life was suddenly taken, how do you think it would affect your family? Picture it. Holidays, birthdays, summertime, family reunions, cookouts, birthday parties without you. Then I had to go get his hat. You know how y'all like to do it. Y'all like to wear the matching hat and match your sneaks. And then I had to get his boot. I was told my son was a big gate drug dealer, whatever that means. He was a big old show off. He loved Timberlands. He had them in all colors, red suede, blue suede. Pass that around. The next time you see a Timberland, I want you to think about Raymond, who ain't here to put his on no more. But I want you to thank God that you're still here to, you're still here to put yours on, amen? Amen? Amen. amen. I'll put him in the middle of my bedroom floor where he stood thousands of times. And I, I would just imagine or pretend that he was standing there. So I, I would just talk to his shoes. I just say, Ray, 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 I miss you, man. I miss you, man. I miss being your mother. I miss cooking for you. Man, I even miss you getting on my nerves. Don't ever have to have your family stand where I stand, because it ain't pretty. It ain't fun. Please don't have them stand where I stand. If y'all don't get nothing else that I said today, please get this. When I realized that my son Raymond wasn't going to change, he wasn't going to change. He wasn't going to stop selling drugs. He wasn't going to stop. He was just going to do his thing, just bigger and different. I called him. I said, Ray, I said, forget about everything I ever taught you. Manners, all that. I said, just remember this one thing. And like I said, if y'all don't get nothing else today, get this. I said, right? I said, if you find yourself in a situation and you don't know what to do, I said, call on the name of the Lord. I said, if your back is up against the wall and you're getting ready to lose your life and you can't even speak or breathe, call on the name of the Lord. I said, repent of your sins and ask God to come into your heart and reside. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. Because for real, all that matters in the end is that you get in. And as he lay on that dirty project floor with gun stuck next to his face, he remembered what I taught him. He remembered what I told him. When he went to try to breathe, he was like, See, he could get no air, because the bullets, it went off through his lungs. He was like, oh man, I'm in trouble. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Okay, now, my mama said, 
I find myself in a situation and I don't know what to do. I'm supposed to call on the name of the Lord. He said, Jesus, help me. And God said, you call me, son? He called me. And he met him right there on that dirty project floor with gum stuck next to his face. But what a wasted life. He never left the state of Pennsylvania. He never got married. He never had children. Like I said, I will never hear, Grandma, the men that killed my son, they stole my grandkids. So I would like everybody at this time to stand, please. For those that are in agreement, to take the hand of the person next to you. I don't stand before you today to disrespect any one of other faiths or beliefs. The only God I can tell you about is the one I serve and the one that died for me. Amen? Please take the hand of the person next to you, all hands touching. And for those that enter agreement, please repeat this prayer. This is the sinner's prayer. Father God, I stand before you now as a sinner. Father God, I repent of everything I've ever done from the moment I was born till right now. Come into my heart. Wash me. Purge me. Clean me up. Make me brand new. Remove my stinking thinking. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he lived and he died and he rose on the third day with all power in his hand. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Father God, I surrender everything to you right now. Father God, please remove any and all unauthorized soul ties to my life and replace them with soul ties authorized by you. I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. In Jesus' name, I'm saved. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. No matter what you're going through, 
God is going to use it all. He's going to use it all. It's all a part of your process. It might not seem like it right now. It might not make no sense, but continue to hold on to God's unchanging hands. I promise you, he will never leave you nor forsake you. I couldn't imagine anything good coming out of my son being murdered, but I realized today Ray had to die so that others will live. What a privilege to be used by God in any capacity. If you can sweep the floor, clean, whatever, whatever, it's a, a privilege to be used by God. So I thank God for the people he's brought us alongside of me. A lot of people just see me as a face to the ministry, but there's a whole team of people that work behind me that makes it happen five days, seven days a week. So it's not just me. Amen? So pray for the people that you don't see, because there's a lot of us. But thank you. God be the glory. I have been actually involved in prison ministry for about 12 years, going in prisons and into jails for a number of years. And that is very rewarding, but I think that there is such a great need to do ministry for people when they get out of prison, to give them um, what they need, the stability that they need, the spiritual um, word that they need to be able to succeed in life. The passion and the love and the dedication of this organization, I think that it is on the cusp of all that it could be. Um, this is really um, an opportunity where we have been slowly gaining momentum in terms of actually bringing our programs in-house. We've always um, given referrals and, and helped people find housing or training or jobs. Um, but now there's an opportunity for us to provide the training and for um, us to, to mentor and provide the jobs. We've always done an excellent job mentoring, at least I think so. Divine Inner Ministry is a spiritual based program and they offer nothing, they offer spiritual. They don't play games, they go for funny stuff. Experience has been rewarding. I am one of the uh, Bible teachers and I don't know who's really the student, me or them, because as I teach, I learn. Ministry is not easy. Ministry is not fun. Ministry is hard, but ministry is enormously rewarding and joyful. And I've cried at those many times because I couldn't go in. It was too hard for me. And as I would reach out to my, my prayer partner, Steve, and he would pray for me, then I would go into renewal and when I came out of renewal, I would have an incredible night with the men. And the beauty of it was, I had the peace of God and the grace of God going home. And there were nights when I didn't even remember driving home. My experience with divine intervention, I actually like to go in and speak to the men. And I have been on the other side of divine where I have an opportunity to work with staff and going on their graduations and really just speak to the men and encourage them and allow them to understand that they have a future, you know, coming home. Once again, I, I mean myself, I am someone who actually also been on the other side of the fence where I was once in prison myself and being in prison, I understand the importance on visiting those who are in prison and really giving them a, a, a step up for as they enter into society. They have an opportunity to um, hear things that can help them that will elevate their life when they're coming home from prison. For Deborah Germany, the awards are numerous and the greatest reward is a restored life. We have our men from Renewal here tonight. Stand up, Brother Eugene and Brother Timothy and Brother Kentucky. They had came so faithfully in the community service. 